Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com, and I'm sitting here at the Livingston booth with none other than Randy Howell. We're talking about the new baits coming out from Livingston Lures. What do you got for me today, Randy? We've got a couple real key baits. We didn't really go all out trying to introduce a lot of stuff this year. We're just trying to make some of the things we've got better and trying to make some of the baits that are traditionally baits that are hard to hook fish and get fish in the boat trying to make those baits better and we we actually introduced this freddie b frog at icast last year but it was a little too early because they didn't have the hook right yet the body was right on the frog but the hook is a really big deal on a frog and i and because they these guys are committed to excellence and doing things right they let us fish with it some and we i told them right away look we can't put this in a package and start selling it because you know you can't hook fish and land them good with that hook so we totally went back and they worked on it forever getting it right getting this this is a 2.0 millimeter custom made 5 alt hook and you can like pull a grouper up off the bottom with it it's so stiff when it's a beefy it. hook yeah, it's a beefy hook and every frog at the ICAST show will get blow ups and get fish on and a lot of fish will get in the boat but you'll lose more on a frog and you'll hear that amongst all the pros at the tournament trail a lot of our pros same way in the way in line are talking about man I lost them on a the frog I missed them on a the frog and a lot of times it's just because the frog you're using doesn't have the right hook in it and I've, I mean I've been a study student of everything but of frog fishing especially the last several years and this year I've weighed in probably more than half or almost two-thirds of my fish on the tournament trail this year have been on a frog and I, I don't it's just you know seasonally how stuff happens we've had a lot of flooded bushes and high water at Raver and in places so it's been a lot of frog fishing so this yeah, what, are, what are the best scenarios for fishing in this lower area this frog yeah frog you know frog fishing a lot of times people think frog fishing you got to be fishing around grass or you know heavy heavy uh, you know matted you know slime or junk like that but really I use a frog more in open water than people would ever think and no not, kidding not, not just out in the middle of the lake but in open water like uh, like we've got a video running in the booth over here some footage from my boat throughout the year that I run the GoPro on during the season and get clips from catching fish and at Rayburn the fish were up in the flooded willows and the bushes and instead of flipping them and pitching them or throwing a Cinco up in them a lot like I normally would I was making long skip casts back into the, the, the flooded areas because the water was so shallow that the fish weren't comfortable staying in it. So if you got too close, you'd see them swim out because it was really clear. So a long cast with a with a white frog and a black frog, just instantly, as soon as it would hit up in there and you'd move it, they'd just smash it. And they'd, when you'd reel one out of there, they'd be four or five more with it. And they were all three to six pound big fish. And I had 24 pounds the first day on all on a frog. So anytime you've got you know, cover that's hard to fish, uh, without hanging up on a regular traditional bait, that's where a frog can excel. And the Livingston frog has sound, and that's the difference in the frog for, that we have versus all the others. We have the, the patented sound technology and all the sound in our crankbaits, like my howler, the one the classic on is a crawfish sound, a shad sound, but a frog, this is an actual frog sound. And it sounds like this, it goes, <laughs> don't make me do it anymore, but that's real. I gotta do that, take one for the team, but that's what it sounds like. And it's a real recording of a frog. So when you skip this frog up, it's got a hard nose in it that has the sound capsule, waterproof sound capsule right here. And it still has a big area right here. So when the fish blows up and bites it, it'll collapse and that big hook can still get the fish right there and that hook can pull them out of heavy cover and so when you skip it up in the bushes or you throw it on top of a grass bed or by a tree or a dock or anywhere and you're walking and I twitch it real lightly on braid I throw it on 70 pound die with samurai braid and you got to fish a frog like this on braid to get the most effectiveness out of the action because you got to snap snap your wrist twitch it almost like you're fishing a walking boss or a zare spook type bait and I try to keep it in one spot as long as I can and make it walk side to side and this bait sloshes water and it stays in one spot longer than normal because it's heavy because of that sound capsule it keeps it nose heavy so it'll sit there and slosh like that so why are you using braid instead of say 70 pound fluorocarbon yeah the bra braid is a big deal because braid it has no stretch and it and it's uh, just an instant reaction time so when you're twitching when as soon as I if I cast 40 yards or 50 yards with that frog and I twitch my wrist one time like that when with, with, I use Ishman Rose Daiwa frog rod. It's, made, it's a 7.4 heavy frog rod. 
and when you twitch that bait, it immediately reacts. If you have fluorocarbon or any other line, it's a delayed reaction. So if you twitch it, it takes a lot more effort to try to make that bait move. And fluorocarbon sinks, so it'll pull the bait down and you can't make it work. So braid floats and it's limp and very tight and that eight strand Samurai Daiwa braid uh, is real responsive. So not only for the action of the bait, but also when the fish hits it, you set the hook and you've got an instant hook up and you pull them out of that heavy cut. Now is that 70 pound, is that braid, is that leader or are you, is that, you have braid just, on, yeah, on the reel itself? That's right, just straight braid. I spool up full line, full braid, uh, full spool of braid, 70 pound Samurai, and I put it on an 8-1 retrieve. The super fast retrieve is real important important too when you're in cover because the faster you can set the hook and get the leverage and get the fish's head up and coming out of the cover the faster you can wind them out. If you, if you want to get done look at some of the video from the fish I was catching at Rayburn it's amazing when I go back and watch myself fishing and see how hard and fast I'm reeling that fish trying to keep his head coming to me without him turning left or right to get hung up in a bush because it's just these little sl small alleys you throw up in and you hook them and they go left or right and you're just winching them. So having that braid, having a fast reel, a long stiff rod puts you in control of that fish and you're able to bring him to you and that's what makes the uh, frog fishing be successful and having the right hook. One last question right here is that when you to get that action out of it are you tying a loop knot on it or are you tying directly to it like a polymer or how are you tying to it? Tying straight to it and I just tie a polymer knot straight to it and a lot of people ask me the question about braid can you does a polymer knot work on braid and I've heard Lot, even pros, it amazes me how many pros I even hear say you can't tie a polymer knot on braid or you need a double polymer because I've tied a straight polymer all my life on every brand braid I've ever used and I've never had it slip, never had a problem one time ever. And with Samurai braid, it's eight strand braid, so it's more tightly woven than an average braid. It's more expensive, but it's more high quality. You can use it one spool all year, but it, it will stay tight and it won't slip. I'll even cut my tag short and it won't, you know, nothing will slip on it. But that's all you do. You don't want a leader. You don't want nothing but that straight braid. And 70 pound Samurai is a smaller diameter than say 70 or 80 pound of another brand. It has a real small, it's like a 12 pound diameter, I think, on there. So it's not too big and it's easy to cast. So that's a big key for me. And having that real big stiff hook, when I set the hook and it sticks to fish and he's in cover, I can pull him as hard as I can to get him out and I don't have to worry about yep. my hook messing up. So it's perfect, good. perfect. All right, well, what else do we have here? I see you got one other bait here. Yeah, real quick, we got a new bait. This is uh, it's called a Diablo, and for the people like that are love the old vintage wiggle wart, which you know any of the eBay guys and guys like like you too, you know how much how much these baits are online on on the eBay. They're fifty or hundred bucks for a good vintage wiggle wart, and even wiggle wart, the group have even tried to. Uh, make a, a, a bait that's as good as the old one, but we still don't seem to have as, a bait as good as the old one. And so we got Livingston to try to make one without copying it, but making it with the same ins inspiration of how it, the action, but it, it has a flared belly side, but that lip on ours has a deep channel right here, so it's immediately scooping like yeah, a Yeah, it's shovel. curved. Yeah, it's curved inside, so it's scooping like a shovel, so that it dives really quickly down to 9 or 10 feet deep on 12-pound gamma fluorocarbon is what I throw it on, and it has the battery sound chip inside, just like all the baits, so it's a lot of weight, and this bait in the central, you know, the Lake of the Ozarks, Table Rocks, and in Arkansas, Missouri Lakes especially, uh, the wiggle wart bait is a hard bait to beat. It always has been. It's a regional bait. So this bait, from what I've seen and we're testing it in the last four or five months, it has the same get down quick, stays flat on the bottom, not like this, but more flat, and it has that hard side-to-side -side motion where it covers a lot of water, and it's like a crawfish scooting across the bottom, running out of the rocks, and it's very deflective. It deflects off rocks really good because of that lip. So, now, when would you reach for that in your tackle box? This bait would be kind of all around year round, depending on what water column you're fishing. If I'm, I'm usually going to fish this type of bait in clean water, anywhere from really clear to moderately stained, but not muddy water. But it's more like a clear water style specialty bait, and I would, you know, usually. February, March, April, uh, right around the pre-spawn time early in the year. And then during the spawn, they move up, obviously, a little shallower. You, you move up to the bank, but then as it gets 
off the bank again. The fish move back off May, June, July, and even to the fall. You can change colors from shad color to crawfish color to a shad color when they're chasing shad. So it's a regional bait a lot, but it's also a very versatile bait that I think will work anytime because of, just because of that action, you know, because there's places that I'll throw my howler and I'll throw you know, a, a different bait here, there, different style baits that we have at Livingston, and sometimes one bait totally outfishes another in one lake or another, and we never know why, but whatever works, you throw it. Right. And that's how this bait is too, and I think when we fish the central uh, and western lakes, it's gonna be a real big ticket. So it's called a Diablo. It's really heavy, you can cast it a long ways, and I think that's gonna make it a real deal in clear water especially. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for all your tips, Randy. Right. Really appreciate that. Uh, you guys got to check this out when they when they come available. I think they're going to be real winners. What do you think? I think so, too. I'm ready to go throw them somewhere. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys.